On seeing Joseph arrive back in the parish, a jealous lady booby meanders through emotions as diverse as rage, pity, hatred, pride and love. The next morning Joseph and Fanny's bans are published and the lady turns her anger onto Parson Adams, who is accommodating Fanny at his house. Finding herself powerless either to stop the marriage or to expel them from the parish. She enlists the help of lawyer scout. Who brings a spurious charge of larceny against Joseph and Fanny to prevent. Or at least postpone the wedding. Three days later. The lattice plans are foiled by the visit of her nephew. Mr. Booby. And a surprise guest. Booby has married Pamela. Granting Joseph a powerful new ally and brother-in-law. What is more, Booby is an acquaintance of the justice presiding over Joseph and Fanny's trial. And instead of Bridewell, has them committed to his own custody. Knowing of his sister's antipathy to the two lovers, Booby offers to reunite Joseph with his sister and take him and Fanny into his own parish and his own family. In a discourse with Joseph on Stoicism and Fatalism, Adams instructs his friend to submit to the will of God and control his passions. Even in the face of overwhelming tragedy, in the kind of cruel juxtaposition usually reserved for Fielding's less savory characters, Adams is informed that his youngest son, Jackie, has drowned. After indulging his grief in a manner contrary to his lecture a few minutes previously, Adams is informed that the report was premature, and that his son has in fact been rescued by the same peddler that loaned him his last few shillings in Book 2. Lady Booby, in a last-ditch attempt to sabotage the marriage, brings a young beau named Didapa to Adam's house to seduce Fanny. Fanny is unmoved by his bold attempts at courtship. Didapa is too bold in his approach and provokes Joseph into a fight. The lady and the beau depart in disgust. But the peddler, having seen the lady, is compelled to relate a tale. The peddler had met his wife while in the army. And she died young, while on her deathbed. She confessed that she once stole an exquisitely beautiful baby girl from a family named Andrews. And sold her on to Sir Thomas Booby. Thus raising the possibility that Fanny may in fact be Joseph's sister. The company is shocked. But there is general relief that the crime of incest may have been narrowly averted. The following morning. Joseph and Pamela's parents arrive. And together with the peddler and Adams. They piece together the question of Fanny's parentage. The Andrews identify her as their lost daughter. But have a twist to add to the tale. When Fanny was an infant. She was indeed stolen from her parents. But the thieves left behind a sickly infant Joseph in return. Who was raised as their own. It is immediately apparent that Joseph is the above-mentioned kidnapped son of Wilson. And when Wilson arrives on his promised visit, he identifies Joseph by a birthmark on his chest. Joseph is now the son of a respected gentleman, Fanny and in-law of the Booby family, and the couple no longer suspected of being siblings. Two days later they are married by Adams in a humble ceremony. And the narrator, after bringing the story to a close, and in a disparaging allusion to Richardson, Reassures readers that there will be no sequel.